Hello friends, myself Vikas Kumar Shakya and I'm going to start a new series on Python language. And uh, from today onwards, you will be able to see one more playlist under a VVSA.org and that will be on Python. So every day I will try to put some video on Python on this uh, series of videos so that you can have something to practice every day. So let's start our course from today onwards on Python. Not going to talk much anything else so just start this one so let's just discuss what is python and why we should use python so you might be hearing this word python and uh, some of you might be aware about the python language as well and you might uh, be doing the development as well in the python so let me tell you this is not a kind of language that you have studied till now like it's not like c++ or c language or any language which is supported by the dot net or anything it's it is a language but it's a interpreted language interpreted language means there is no need of compilation whatever you have to run you just have to run directly on the prompt or using the tool that you have or using the python environment okay so what else it has like why we are using the python the reason is uh, one of the reasons uh, is like uh, development using the python is simpler compared to uh, c++ and java and it's efficient as well not in terms of runtime or not in terms of any other aspects not in terms of performance but in terms of ease of development basically it makes the development for any cloud based or any iot based or uh, for machine learning in fact for any any kind of thing that you are going to develop basically it is used mostly for cloud iot and machine learning based applications and tools but it can be used for anything and uh, the advantage of using the python language can be understood like if you write some code in c++ or in c language that has taken around 300 lines of code to write something then that piece of code will remain only 100 lines of code if you are writing the same piece of code, if you are writing the code to achieve the same thing that you have done using C++ or C or Java, that will be around one third of the code written in C++ or Java. So basically Python makes it very much abstract for all those things where you need to worry about anything like how to do this, how to do that, how to connect to the file system, how to connect to these sockets and all those things. So those things have been highly abstracted now so that you only have to worry about your application development only about uh, only you have to worry about the business logic and you just need to learn uh, very few things when it comes to the syntax or semantics in the python okay so what are the benefits of using the python you can write the code in any platform basically i will cover in this course only for the windows platform you can have the same code for the linux or mac or anything wherever whichever platform you want to run right so uh, i will try to explain it on uh, windows only but i will try if i can have some uh, flavor of uh, linux or unix on my system installed then i can show you uh, some examples using the linux as well okay so you can write code in any platform for any platform and then you can carry the same code and you can run the same code on other platforms as well just like other library uh, other languages this python language also has an inbuilt library you might have seen that c++ c java they all have jar files uh, in case of c++ they have libraries similarly python also has an inbuilt large library and it has pre-built set of functions as well and it's it's a very much expressive language you can easy uh, it's very easy to write code in python it's very really easy to understand as well whatever has been written in python code so not need to worry about the messy codes around that happens with the c plus plus c or java code but it will not happen with the python it's a free and open source and uh, uh, it's uh, dynamically and it's, it's not uh, it's not that strict language that you need to provide the data type of the variables that you are going to use it's a, it's not a strongly typed language you can omit the data type right so if you are using a variable of type integer then you don't need to worry about it 
your interpreter will itself find it out. Python interpreter will itself find it out what is the type of variable. So you don't need to worry, don't need to worry about that. So not wasting much time, let's start with the Python development. And I will basically cover all the syntax and all the rules of the Python language. I will show you all the examples related to the Python scripts using 3.8.1 only. Okay, and it's uh, it's all Windows based as I told you. Okay, so let's start. Let's see from where we can install it. So I just installed it using the python.org downloads windows. This is the URL you can go www.python.org then downloads then windows so here i just uh, just um, um, downloaded this version of the installer windows x3664 executable installer and it was copied here somewhere here python381amd64.exe i just ran it as run as administrator and i have already installed it so if I already have installed it, then I can see these three options, modify, repair, or install. So if you, have, if you are installing it for the first time, then it is not going to show you these options. Rather, it will show you simple steps to follow, which you can follow very much easily to install your Python uh, IDE and uh, command interpreter as well. So I'm not going to install you uh, install this for you because it's very simple you just need to follow the next 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 buttons and then at the end you just finish it okay so after you install it you will just able to see it here python 3.8 manuals ideally this is the ide which you will be using while developing the python code and these are the module docs okay so let's open this IDLE, which is the command line, which will show you basically the command line interpreter. Okay, so you can see these three angular brackets here. This means that you are on the uh, shell of the Python. It's command interpreter shell. So anything which is uh, which will be developed by you in your application, you can check that if that piece of code is fine or not on this command interpreter i will show you how right suppose if i write one plus one then it's a right syntax okay it's the right syntax so if i press enter then it will show me two it is not going to show me any error right so this is uh, how you can check your piece of code whether it's a single line of code or a simple function or a section of code anything that you want to do that you can check here okay so what else you can do using this command interpreter right one more important thing whenever we talk about the kind of command interpreter or we are into any shell is the help feature provided by that shell so does this interpreter provides any help yes it provides any help if you write just help it will give you the instructions that you need to write uh, help brackets or help inside the brackets the topic name to get the help okay so let's see what it does when i type help it opens me another cell where i can just type the topic name to get the help about okay suppose there is a function print in uh, python so if you want to see the help related to print function then you can just type the function in print and you can see it will show you all about print function right and if you want to come back from this cell then you just need to press ctrl c and it, you will be back okay so now we will see what else we can do on this command interpreter i told you like you can test any piece of code that you want to write in your uh, python script you can check it here on the command interpreter as well this is uh, the command interpreter named IDLE, which comes by default with the Python, but there are other interpreters as well. There are other IDEs as well. Interpreter is same, but there are IDEs. One of them is GNU Emacs, and one of them is Komodo IDE. So those are for the commercial development. 
uh, but um, for our purpose for learning the python we will use this ide idle only right you can do the development as well it's not like you cannot do all things using this uh, interpreter uh, using this uh, ide you can do everything with this ide that you can achieve through others but it's like with the others it becomes simpler but with this one since we are learning so it's good to have small piece of code written using the IDLE compiler uh, IDLE IDE only okay so now let's move ahead and let's see uh, how we can test a function okay suppose we are writing a function in Python before I tell you anything about the functions in Python let's see how we write the function in Java or in C++ in C++ or in Java you might have seen these kind of syntaxes while you declare a function int which means the return type then the function name then the number of arguments it takes and then you write the code like piece of code whatever it performs inside the function body right so this is the way you write the things and and if your function return doesn't return any value then what you do you just declare it like void but when we talk about the Python then there is nothing like functions may or may not return values in Python every function returns value if inside a function you write a return statement then that function will return that value suppose you are returning one from a function then that function is returning one but if you are returning nothing from that function there is no return statement inside that function then that function is returning nothing and nothing is also a value right so in python every function is returning some value if it is not returning anything then it is returning nothing but it is it's not like it is not returning anything it is returning something either nothing or some value so put put it that way okay so let's see how we write the function in uh, python okay so let's see how we declare the function in python to declare a function we use the keyword def and suppose we are writing a function to add two numbers def sum then we don't need to provide any type of the argument you just need to write the name of the arguments at the runtime it will be decided that what are the type of these arguments by the interpreter of the python okay so if i have written this thing like def sum ab then my declaration is complete right there is no function body as of now and if i just press enter here then you can see it is showing you invalid syntax because this is not the syntax of a function when you are writing it on the uh, command interpreter then let's see how we can write it it's like def sum and then a b and then a colon after colon you will reach to the next line please remember that whenever you will reach to the next line uh, it will be a tabbed space right it will be a tabbed space because in python there is no curly braces to show you that from where your piece of code starts and and at which point it ends and all this is done through the indentation and that indentation has been driven by a tab key in python right so if if i'm writing a function named sum then uh, it will be starting from the place where i have pressed one tab on the next line and from here it will be starting i'm just writing return a plus b right so you can see that def has been written from here but when you come to the next line it's not like i can write it from uh, from beginning if I write it from beginning, then it will again give me error. Like, suppose if I write this way, then it will again give me an error. Expected and indented block, right? So indentation basically shows the start and end of a particular code block, whether it's a condition, if condition, any loop, or any function. You need to provide the indentation to represent, to show that this is from where my code block starts right so if i want to write a correct function then 
def sum, then a, b, and then semicolon, then return a plus b, and then press enter. Right? So now your function is done. Right, so still you are in cell for writing the function, so that's why it's not showing you the command interpreter cell. So you need to press it again, then you will be able to see the command interpreter again. So now you can see the prompt again, and now you can use this prompt to test your function. You have written this function sum ab, and now let's see if this function works fine or not. So just write a function print. Print is a function, I will tell you about this function later when I will be covering the uh, uh, course of Python, then I will individually discuss all these functions and how to use them. But today I'm just showing you that what is the use of command interpreter. And from next uh, video onwards, you can see the big things to happen, right? You will learn some interesting concepts again. So let's see what we can do. Can we print the values if I pass some values to the sum function? So I just written this sum. And then I just written 12 and 20. And let's see if it works or not. It works. 12 and 20, it gives me 32. So my function is working fine. It's just a simple example. You know that it's a very simple function. But I'm just showing you that how it is used. Okay. Uh, another feature, if you're talking about the functions, then let's cover one more thing about the functions. You can have default arguments just like you have in C++ or in Java, default arguments. The same way you can have default arguments in Python as well. So if I write void sum A and B is equal to 10, and then I write return A plus B, and then let's see what happens. If I write, if I write print, and then if I write sum, and then I provide only a value 12, right? Then also it is correct because the second argument is uh, is an optional argument, right? So it should work and it should give me the result as 22. Yes, it has given me 22. So this is the basic use of your command interpreter. I was just showing you that how you can uh, debug your application debug your some of the functions using this interpreter this is basically a kind of debugging tool as well for you it's a cell of the of the python command interpreter so you can use this one and uh, in co coming videos we will also we will use this one to test all various functions whenever there will be uh, some complicated or any kind of function which we want to test independently like unit testing right function is a unit right if you want to test that unit then you will be testing a particular function. In fact, when you write any piece of code, if you have written a loop as well, then that loop is also a unit and you need to test that unit as well. Right? So until you test all the units, your unit testing is not complete. So we will test all those units uh, using this command interpreter and we will see that how to write the code in Python. Okay, so this is all about for today, about the Python for today and uh, uh, and from next video onwards, I will let you know that how to write the code in Python, how to create the new source files uh, using the Python language. Okay, so till then you enjoy it. You just install your Python on your machine. Just try to use your command interpreter the way I showed you. Right, so you will find it useful and you will just enjoy it. Okay. So we will meet again soon in my next video. So till then you can just have some hands on with the Python syntaxes, whatever I have shown you, just at least install Python on your systems. And then from next video onwards, we will learn some new topics. Okay, so till then, bye-bye, have a nice day and we'll meet soon.